My favourite number is uh, 17. Um, it's a Fermat prime, which means it's 2 to the power something plus 1. And it's got lo lots of beautiful properties. Um, any Fermat prime, you can always create a geometric figure with that number of sides using just a ruler and compass. Um, there's also uh, the secret to the um, evolutionary survival of a cicada in North America that stays underground for 17 years, using the primeness to keep it out of sync of a predator. Um, the cicada um, exploits these primes. Oh no, I don't actually. I think uh, um, uh, numbers all have something special about them. I think that's the the amazing thing. So um, even forty two. It's interesting that um, uh, uh, a lot of people ask me why uh, Douglas Adams chose forty two um, and uh, as the the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And, and apparently he said he thought it was the dullest number, and so that it wouldn't have anything interesting about it that people could associate it with it. He also once said he thought it was the funniest two-digit number, which is kind of curious. Um, uh, but actually even 42 has um, extraordinary properties, that actually help you to um, link uh, primes to quantum physics. My big thing is that we don't tell people the big stories of um, maths and science, that we tend to, to teach it a bit like a musical instrument where you just learn scales and arpeggios and you ne never actually hear any real music. So I think that we should be less afraid of telling kids some of the big theories, which they won't understand all of it, um, but you know, who understands the whole of Shakespeare, yet we're quite happy to expose kids to Shakespeare. So, so I, I think that's what we're missing, is teaching the, the Shakespeare of maths. My big area of research is symmetry, so I'm trying to understand what sort of symmetrical objects can exist, um, both in our three-dimensional world but uh, in higher dimensions as well. So, uh, so I'm trying to make sense of um, trying to classify um, uh, what's, what symmetries can exist. So I've, I've discovered some new sort of symmetrical objects which really have um, changed our perspective on, on what we think um, the world of symmetry might look like. And so I'm, I'm exploring uh, a little bit further um, what the implications of these new discoveries uh, might be. No, 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 no physical applications. Uh, no, I mean, uh, the thing is that most mathematicians do their work because they, they love discovering new things, surprising things. Um, but um, that said, there often are surprising phys uh, real applications. So actually, the discovery of certain symmetrical objects, um, which were just discovered for the beauty of doing science and maths um, actually have been incredibly useful for error correcting codes in telecommunications. Um, so a lot of the first images that were sent back um, from NASA of uh, pictures from the surface of Jupiter and things like that were using extraordinary symmetrical uh, codes that were based on something that a mathematician had just discovered just for the for the love of it. Um, so I think that's a great thing why maths uh, should continue to be funded at a very sort of uh, blue skies level because you're going to miss so many things if you just always talk about impact. I think that's one of the frightening things about government at the moment, is that they want to know what the economic implications of something are going to be. And if you limit yourself with that sort of goal, you're not going to discover the things which will have real economic um, implications.